What's going on guys? My name is Hussein and I thought I'm gonna do some something a little bit different. So uh, Brad Travis just published a new video building a React application. He's using a brand new API that I just heard about and uh, it's the Breaking Bad API. And I don't know about you guys, if you didn't watch the show, shut down this video immediately and go watch that show. It's amazing. All right, so uh, there is someone generous enough who actually built a free API and that is also authentication free so you don't need to authenticate to use this uh, API and it only have like what 10,000 rate limit which is pretty enough to build a decent application so this guy is very generous and then uh, thank you so much uh, Brad for introducing it to this API I want to make a video just like to discuss how much can we know about a backend giving its API and the answer is pretty a lot of stuff. So this is what I'm gonna do in this video. I'm gonna tell you using that, I'm gonna show you how to uh, see what kind of load balancer they are running, if any, what kind of reverse proxy they are running, what kind of backend web server or web framework they are running, and what kind of encryption they are using, what version of TLS they are using, and which version of HTTP they are using. And you, and uh, yeah, this can tell you a lot about a backend and can gives you hint to build a better application on your front end, right? So you can use this knowledge to build better front end application as a result, right? So how about we jump into it, guys? So what I'm gonna do here is open a brand new, and let's copy this base URL, which is the Breaking Bad API. And we're gonna do, I'm gonna open a brand new terminal and uh, clear and here's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna curl dash V that means give me a verbose details of this puppy and hit enter look at that so let's start dissecting what we have here I am going to start with the protocol version what kind of HTTP protocol obviously it's HTTP because it's a rest endpoint right so uh, what we're doing here is the curl offered using the application layer protocol negotiation offered h2 as http2 and offer http1 let's see what the server actually accepts right and obviously the server offered uh, tls 1.3 as maximum but it's also the client also support tls 1.2 so it did a client hello the server respond uh, back with tls 1.2 so here's the thing. So the whole thing is now a TLS 1.2 negotiation. So a little bit longer than TLS 1.3, right? And I talked about the difference between the two, the encryption and all that stuff. And yeah, so that's the first information. We now know that the back end is using TLS 1.2, right? That's one piece of back end information. Here's the second back end information we know. The server only support HTTP 1.1. It does not support HTTP 2 uh, version 2. So if you're on a browser, the browser will downgrade the connection to HTTP 1.1. That also means that if you're uh, running in the browser, the browser will establish 6 TCP connection to 10 TCP connection, pair domain, pair breaking bad domain in this case, and it will try to essentially parallel those requests into these TCP, 6 TCP connection versus the HTTP 2, which is we have one beautiful TCP connection to multiplex all this stuff. Anyway, it's not that bad, but just something to be aware of. So you're going to consume a little bit more memory than, uh, than HTTP 2, right? So LPN accepted HTTP 1. What else? What else can we learn? Uh, the certificate authority, they're using Let's Encrypt. All right, that's free stuff. So they, this is going to expire in three months. Not really much information, but yeah, exactly. So this guy actually just created this June 16 or gal. Pretty coolish. And then it's going to expire seven, September 14. So pay, just pay attention that uh, this is going to be renewed soon. What else? What else can we learn? Well, now that the client knows it's HTTP 1.1, it's going to send an HTTP 1.1. And uh, that's the actual Git request. So we establish communication, we establish encryption, all that jazz. But now we're about to actually send the header. So the header is like, hey, I'm curl. And then, uh, yeah, here's the server responding with 1.1. And here's the thing. 
he or she is running Nginx. And this is the version of Nginx. So that's the load balancer. That's the reverse proxy. <laughs> it even tells you what, what he's using. He's using Ubuntu. So it's a Ubuntu box or maybe a Docker container. We can't really tell, right? And that's uh, Nginx 1.10.3. Awesome, right? Okay. That's um, and that's that's the thing. Nginx by default, when you spin it up and you did, and I made a video about Nginx. Check it out. If you don't configure it correctly, Nginx will always assume TLS 1.2. That explains why do we have TLS 1.2 by default here. So that's good. The encryption algorithm is not that bad, to be honest. It's still a uh, uh, elliptic curve uh, Diffie Hillman with an RSA signature. That's not bad at all. That's I mean that's good. Uh, let's continue, let's continue. What do we have? So Nginx, version 1.10. What's the current version of Nginx? Let's check out. Well, it's not that old. It's like nine versions old. Mm. That's the current release of Nginx, 1.19. So just pay attention. So if there are bugs or stuff that have been, or features that you're going to need, I prob probably you shouldn't worry about, worry about as a front-end engineer, to be honest. But yeah, that's something to be known. So 1.10.3. So maybe if there is like a bug that hasn't been fixed, that a security leak or something, uh, you might want to just be aware of this, right? All right. What else? What else? Yeah, well, the, the content type is JSON. Well, duh, obviously. And here's the thing. He or she is running Node.js Express, right? So that's the powered by so that's whatever behind the nginx server so nginx just uh, essentially the back end server adds that original header the server header right and what happened is nginx takes that terminate the traffic and adds its own header which is x powered by as the original server and then adds itself as an nginx and you can if you have more proxies in the middle you can essentially tell more and more information based on that so yeah and look at that he's allowing you to cross origin right so he's allowing curse course <laughs> course c-o-r-s right cross origin resource uh, policy All right so you can basically call his API from anywhere and that, and he will accept that, right? So that's obviously, otherwise it's gonna, it's gonna be a problem. Oh, look at that. He's also enabling e-tags, which is uh, for caching mechanisms, which is awesome. So now if, if you built this API to make native get request on the browser, the browser will take care of e-tag caching for you. Just be careful. I'm not sure if these are accurate numbers or just generated by Nginx. So make sure you're not relying on that. So if you saw like a 304 is coming back from the server as like a 304 not modified, just pay attention to that. This might be the problem. So I'm not sure that this API is actually uh, showing that content. Like let's, let's make another request to confirm. So KC, right? Well done. I take that back. It's actually correct. So he's giving you the same e tag every time. Well, looks like it's correct. All right, guys. So that's like a quick video to show you what, how much can you tell about the back end by just having the protocol. And I can go down to the Wireshark level, but just curl dash v is so amazing to tell you so much information about this. Right now, you can configure your application. Uh, to actually build, uh, communicate with this API and in a, in a more efficient manner. All right, guys, that's it for me today. Very quick video. Hope you enjoyed it. I'm going to see you in the next one. You guys stay awesome. Goodbye.